The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Writer's Block Podcast NH. This is a podcast designed by writers for writers on the journey to being published. Joined Mandra, Miss Cornet. It was so healthy and nutritious. Deborah Monk. Can we open each podcast with a dance number? Shelly Devlin. It was so full of inspiration and sparkles. Every Tuesday morning live on YouTube. And make sure you subscribe to catch the podcast anytime on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Podbean, Spotify, or your favorite podcast catcher. It's time to be inspired, feel empowered, and be well with the Writer's Block Podcast NH. And welcome to the Writer's Block Podcast. I'm Mandra. I'm Debbie. Thank you for joining us at the Writer's Block, where our mission is to inspire, empower, and to help people be well. We are streaming live on Facebook from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe on this Tuesday morning. And today's show is dedicated to book trailers and how to use them to promote your book. For many of us, the skills needed to produce a good book trailer is way out of our wheelhouse. So we have author and book trailer expert Larry Brill joining us today via Skype. Larry has spent more than 25 years as a TV news anchor. He's interviewed many well-known and even more lesser-known personalities, ranging from politicians, including two U.S. presidents named Bush, to authors such as James Mishner, Sue Grafton, and Jane Smiley. He left the TV news business behind when he wrote his first novel, Live at Five, a hilarious look at some of the crazy things that go on behind the scenes in small-time TV news. He's published two more novels while running a video marketing firm in Austin, Texas. After climbing out of the depths of depression caused by the majority of really bad video trailers most authors produced, Larry sobered up and is now in demand to coach writers on how to make a better book trailer and what to do with them when they're done. His new goal in life is to help every author create a video book trailer as awesome as Debbie Monk's Well-Behaved Woman Coming Undone. So welcome to the show, Larry. We're so happy to have you. Yay! (laughs) The crowd goes wild. (laughs) Lots of applause on Facebook. (laughs) Ladies, thank you for having me this morning. So tell us, let's get started with with book trailers. Why do we need to have them? You know... uh, I did a, um, I was working a conference, writer's conference in Austin, right here where I live, um, this past summer. There was a workshop that was going on, and they have a lot of agents come in from around the country, but primarily New York. And during one of the sessions, one of the agents from Curtis Brown stood up and said something to the effect that every author should have a book trailer. Now, if it hadn't been you know, inappropriate, I probably would have run up and hugged her right then and there, because it really is true. When you look at some of the numbers, um, video is probably the most persuasive way an author can get people to investigate them or their book. Why why do you think somebody will spend five million dollars for 30 seconds in the Super Bowl? Because video works, commercials work. And that's pretty much what a book trailer is. It's a promotional sort of video. And it is probably the best way to really connect with either the readers or other writers. Well, my question for you then is once, let's say you make a good book book trailer, what do you do with it? Where do you put it? How do you put it out there? Holy Toledo, that's a that's a big question. Uh, well, the first step is you ought to have it, and I'm not going to name names, Debbie, but you <laughs> ought to have it on, on the homepage of your author site. Good, okay, <laughs> I'm taking notes. <laughs> Let's start there. Yeah. Um, I think I think every author should have a video on their homepage of their of their author site, whether it's actually promoting a single book or promotes them as an author, because readers want to get to know you on a personal level. And again, video is the best way to do that. Obviously, YouTube is a place that you can do that without going into all the weeds. Those two go hand in hand, because in most cases, an author is going to have their video on YouTube, and then their webmaster is going to take 
that and put it onto the home page or a different page of their website. And it looks like it's running on the website, but it's actually being hosted by YouTube. So there's that. And then there's that's also YouTube's a good place where people can go to find you. The other thing is, um, and I'm not going to name names, Debbie, but <clears throat> every author should have an author set, uh, author website on Amazon. And you should post those videos. You can post up to eight videos on Amazon. You can post up to eight videos on Goodreads. So you have those kinds of outlets. Facebook is a very good place where you can post your video as well. You can pin it on Facebook and it'll stay up there for seven days. And then you have to take it down or they take it down for you. I forget which. But they'll it'll go down. And then after a week or two, you put it back up on Facebook and it stays up there for seven days and then you take it down. One of the beauties of marketing through video, you can create one absolutely killer video like Debbie's and you can use it and you can use it over and over again in all these different different sources. There's also I ha um, I pulled this up. There's a couple of um, trailer sites that you can actually produce a video and they will promote it. And um, there's trailer shelf and book reels are the two that are probably the most um, popular trailer shelf. And, uh, it's uh, Trailer Shelf. Okay. Uh, or I'm sorry. Yeah. Trailer Shelf and BookReels.com. Okay. And you can create a video and you can upload it and they will promote it for you. Have you done that? I have. And did you find it uh, effective? I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your candor. Yes. Um, Is there a cost to that? No. It, you can do these for free. Okay. Something that's very important uh, that some people don't realize, YouTube is a Google property, and yes. Google absolutely loves when you use their properties. So when you host your video on YouTube and you tag it properly, meaning you identify yourself as the author uh, and even have links to be able to buy it on Amazon, all this cross-linking is going to give you what they call Google juice and it's going to help your search engine optimization or SEO. You'll hear uh, website geeks talk about SEO all the time. Absolutely. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons why authors should try to expand their platform in as many directions as they can. And <clears throat> where video is concerned, this is probably one of the biggest is you get the, you get the little bit of bump, the SEO bump that comes with that. Uh, the other thing too is, um, one thing that a lot of people forget, you know, a, an author does a book trailer and they dump it on YouTube and they say, OK, I'm done. There you go. Isn't that great? You know, right. Debbie? And then they Do wonder why they don't get a whole lot of a whole lot of views, because it's like sending out a tweet when you first start. You know, it's out there and then it disappears again. Nobody really goes there. You need to you, you need to. Build the better mousetrap. But once you got the mousetrap built, you have to let people know the mousetrap exists. The other thing is, and I'm not going to mention names, Debbie, but <laughs> in the description that, that goes below your video on YouTube, for instance, the, the within that first line or two, and I know that you've got yours there, but it's, it's hidden because you have to click more. It should be right up the top. Where can I buy this? Where can I find out more? There should be that link right under your YouTube posting and it has to be right up near the top just one other very much like bit of any sale i mean really you're in sales at the point that you become an author and your your book hits commerce it's always be closing so you give your potential reader every opportunity to find you and be able to make that purchase at a, at a moment's notice one absolutely click. right all right. Well, good. We're gonna now. Let's say now. I'd like to. Someone's treating you like a hostile I witness. I like this, Debbie. I know. It's like okay, gloves are off. This is gonna be fun. So, um, I'm trying to make a play on how you keep saying let's not use names, Debbie. Uh, so Debbie would like to say. You know, well, I can't be good at everything, Larry. Help me. Yeah, but wait, you did a good book trailer. I did, he I do. said that. I know, and I th I do. I believe I did a good book trailer. Well, he trailer. found you based on your book trailer. Right. I know. And you so know it's a matter of where you're putting it and how you're getting my, people to see it. That's exactly my point. Larry, I, can people hire you to help them? They can, yes. Because I've, done, wait, I've done a number of book trailers. It's not my main business because 
authors don't have any money. <laughs> and, and I oh, you know, don't have any short money of wearing, short of wearing gold lame tights and walking the streets down on South Congress here in Austin. I can be bought. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll do that. If I'll, I'll, I'll well, walk my the question is, tights. so do you have a but package yes. for someone like Deb? Who? No, 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 no. You're, you guys are going off totally on the wrong trail. I have no problem here. I don't need Larry to make the book trailer. That part. I loved Larry. I loved going. I loved scouting the location. I loved find. I, I used the dress that I used on the cover of my book. My friend Brenda did it. I choreographed all, every, all the moves that she did. We did it prior. I filmed it. I, I paid somebody else to edit it. I could do book trailers. Or I could do a book trailer a month. I would love to do a book trailer a month. I would have no problem. Now doing can I ask him my question? No, because I have to want to ask my question first. So <laughs> I can't be good at everything, Larry. I can't write the book and do good book trailers and also be good at promotion. So there's got to be somebody who can help. You know, I feel like I'm a, I'm a good package. I'll give somebody a lot to market. I Dead silence. <laughs> As, as an author, isn't it frustrating that you you take a look at you go online and you take a look at all these people who are making a lot of money as indie authors, for instance, yeah. and where they get their money is te teaching other people how to do something. Right. That's where they're making their money. They're not really making their money on their sales. And then when you when you look at what they're telling you, it's like, okay, well, all you really need to do is you need to Skype every day. You need to Facebook every day. You need to blog three times a week. You, you need to have a newsletter. You need to do this. And then they say, oh, and it's real simple. But you just, you got to have really, really good content. Right. Well, okay, now you have to research where you're going to get your content and then where are you going to post it and where are you going to – there just isn't enough hours in the day to do all that and write your next, bo next book. And that's uh, really frustrating. So I think one of the things that um, – and we talked very briefly about this, but one of the things that I want to try and start doing in 2019 is finding <clears throat> an outlet – to help writers when they do a, a video book trailer to help them find ways to get it out there for them. And I might, you know, add that as one of my, I don't know, let's say a service yeah. that mm -hmm. I would offer in addition to doing book trailers. So you, you, uh, you yourself, you actually do the filming of the book trailer and the editing and all that? If it's necessary, yes. If the, if the client has a budget for that, Yes. Most clients I have found, and there, there are services um, that you can do. I mean, you can have somebody produce a book trailer for you for about $10 on Fiverr. I don't know if you're familiar with yep. Fiverr, F-I-V-E-R-R, Fiverr, -R, Fiver. yep. <laughs> um, where you can hire a freelancer to do the, the editing. Some of them will have a small, a limited amount of images, still images that they could use and a small music library that they can use. And they will put it together from, you know, starting at $10 up into the hundreds of dollars. Um, and so that you don't have to actually go and hire a really expensive cinematic book trailer company, which could cost you. I mean, if you really wanted to go into the higher end, I mean, you could spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a book trailer. Right. Easily. Yeah. So, uh, but I do, you know, I have done a number. I'll go out and, and videotape them or I bring them into, st you have Studio 21. I have Studio B, which is my dining room. Uh, <laughs> Studio you know, D. If, if, <laughs> if the, the client, and again, most authors don't have as much money as, uh, as a lot of my uh, corporate clients do. I'm losing my earpiece here. I don't know what's going on. Um, so I usually cut them a deal. Uh, I don't charge authors very much. But again, a lot of them still find it above their budget. And they want to go with just still pictures, text. A lot of them will do it themselves, which is really where I've been busy lately, uh, writers conferences, teaching people how to use the free online uh, video services that you can do. And you can produce it on your own. And again, you'll have access to a library of images, you'll have access to music. So i spend more time these days actually teaching, uh, coaching clients, or we'll do the hybrid thing. I just finished a project for a woman and she decided that she wanted to write the script 
which was fine. And she wanted to pick all the images, which was fine. She bought some. Uh, we consulted on, she said, okay, I have this much money. I said, okay, well, then I want you to get video of this, this, and this, and then buy or get free co free um, pictures for this, 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 and this. So we worked together to shape what the images would look like. She wrote it, sent it to me. I did all the editing and sent it back to her, and she's getting ready for her launch. It's going to be in next month. Oh. So it, it, we do it a, a couple of different ways, um, but I can do full service if, if you like. And, how and I can also, you know, I can also just coach you through it. What are some of the pitfalls? Like what makes, you know, some book trailers good and others just junk that you don't even want to watch? Um, first and foremost, well, let's not to name names, <clears throat> but let's take a look yeah, okay. at Well-Behaved Woman. And the trailer for that. Yeah. <laughs> the thing it's really that, good. that stands out, <clears throat> well-behaved woman trailer, is that, I mean, they call them motion pictures for a reason, because there's motion in there. Have you noticed that 90% that of the book trailers out there are just still images? It's, it's a PowerPoint slideshow. Right, it's yes. a slideshow, yeah. And that just cranks my cookies. I'm sorry. I, um... I understand the need for that, and I understand that the cost factor is important. But one of the things that stands out with with Debbie's trailer is there there is this beautiful, you know, image of a woman who is represents the story itself, and she's moving, and she's on a carousel, and she does this. That's that's number one. You should have some sort of motion. That's why they call them motion pictures. And I, I, I actually, for people who say that they can't do it themselves, on your cell phone, you have a better camera right now than the most high-end camera from any point in the 90s. I mean, you, you can certainly do it on your cell phone, turn it sideways. <laughs> Um, yes, turn and there's, sideways. Yeah, there's, okay. there's editing software on your phone. <laughs> you can Google um, royalty-free music. It'll cost you $5 a song, and it'll tell you how many downloads the song is good for or how many times you can use it for impressions. And if you need it for more than 5,000 views, you just pay a little more, pay $10. But it's easy enough to be able to pull it off on your own with a little tiny bit of research. I don't think anybody needs to hire a studio necessarily. I mean, certainly, Larry, if somebody has it in their budget, you, you would be a great resource. But I just think people need to not use it as an excuse that, oh, I don't have the equipment. You, you certainly have it. Well, exactly. I think that I think Larry and I are both good examples of of writers who are going back into their real life and pulling the skills that they have. You know, as a professional ballroom dancer, and Brenda's a dancer as well. You know, mm -hmm. movement, of course, was going to play into it. The 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 image, the prettiness of it. Um, that is just what I'm. That's what I do. I choreograph things. So that's natural for me. I you know, my friends who my writer friends who aren't dancers couldn't have produced that video, but. Everybody, like Larry, he's going back into his world uh, as a TV anchor and using his skills. I think that's an important aspect that writers can use to promote their own work, is to figure out what their strengths are. I think the one thing that, and, and I agree with, and Jonathan has it nailed pretty well there. Anybody can do these, and they can do them fairly well with just your your cell phone, yep. you know, yeah. um, that's the equipment is, is that good these days, which is why I do more coaching now than actually producing the videos for them. Um, because in the right hands or even in the wrong hands, um, <clears throat> somebody who has the, the essential message can do this really easily. And I would love to see authors do the, a lot more of them. Uh, one of the things that Deb did is uh, she hired a college kid to do some of her editing. I mean, I can edit video. I just hate doing it. So it was relatively inexpensive. It was very inexpensive. He to, was to have a, a college kid who this is what he's doing is getting his degree in, in video production. He was happy to do it. Loved going out and doing the film shots and all that stuff. No, I did the oh, film Oh, you shots. did the film. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of the video you and I did. Um, but So, so <clears throat> Debbie, you were the one who was holding the... The camera that took the pictures of the of the the woman in the skirt dancing and on the carousel and yes. the whole bit. Yep. And I know I, I I held the camera the wrong way. 
Yes, you did. Yeah. Well, but um, for Facebook Live, for instance, you have to hold it in a vertical manner. But for anything else, you want to hold it horizontally. Right. Okay. Right, and I and I, I realized that after the fact, but I went with no, but it. This it's is a good. learning lesson. This is good. Yeah, and yeah. We, I, I knew that the but, second. But people are used to that anymore these days, and you'll see it. You know, on um, watch cable news, how much of their stuff is shot. You know, that direction, especially if it's older video. Right. You know, mm-hmm. so people are people are used to seeing that kind of thing. And I did and think I've, it, had, I've had to work with some old video sometimes that doesn't fit the new widescreen yep. format. And there are ways to manipulate it in the editing process, but that's way beyond what we need to talk about today. Right. Um other tips. Uh, and oh quick I want to ask too, how yeah. long do you suggest they are? One minute. That's what, right. One minute. Okay. Yep. And I noticed that your videos, that your book trailers that you did, you kind of had the character in the book, but then you also had almost a narrator t- t- kind of talking about the book. Mm-hmm. And I thought, I thought that was quite interesting and probably very effective. I, <clears throat> again, video is a combi- uh, a video is a combination of the images, the sound, and the lighting. And you have to have those three right. And when if you got the if you have those three right, then you're doing you're doing a good job. Part of the thing that irks me about the videos, the book trailers, where they're just text on the screen, is that you're losing the power of video by not having a narrator. Now the The plus side of that is how many people are watching these videos on their phone these days? People who are watching them on their phone, they have to have that text in there because most of them are not going to be listening to it the same way they would on their computer at home. Right. So the best way to do it would be a combination of having a really nice voice, which I don't anymore. In a um, world. A bunch of <laughs> – for a bunch of reasons. One of the reasons I got out of the TV news business was I lost my broadcast voice. Oh, and I'm geez. not going to go into all the reasons for that. And you couldn't find <clears throat> it? But um, – Having that voice is powerful. Yeah. And yeah. so if you think your audience is going to be watching it on their computer at home uh, or their iPad or something like that, where they're tuned in to the sound, then you really want that because that helps the connection. Right. Right. I, I will. I'm, I'll definitely consider that doing one like that in the near future. Don't worry, baby. I got you covered. I've got the broadcast voice. Feel feel free. I mean, people ask me what my rates are, and I say somewhere between zero and astronomical. (laughs) Oh, that that's yeah. Yeah, So you have a sliding you have a sliding scale. Uh, absolutely, <laughs> Larry. I do. I have the the friends and family and authors discount that I usually give to to writers, and if I know them typically, I'll do it for free. Is there a uh, is there an email address that someone could reach out to yeah, you? Yeah, how do we find you, Larry? If, how do folks uh, find you? How do you find me? Yes. Oh, I don't know. There's probably <laughs> you could probably find me. The best way is just to send me an email. Okay. This is my my version of the the graphic on the TV the screen. Ticker. Yeah, we appreciate the that. Yeah, you want want to do the the this is the the crawl across the bottom I of love the screen it. here. <laughs> so that's l a r at larrybill dot com. Larry Brill. Larry, Larry, Brill. Larry Brill. Um, yep. And Larry is just, that's, I started using Larry a lot um, because that's just what my family and friends call it. They're too lazy to say Larry. Two syllables is too much work for them. Right. right. That's a lazy. So, hey, Larry, you know, it's like that kind of thing. Jonathan, can, Larry, can you read that one more time? Because I can't see it. That's uh, L A R at Larry Brill dot yeah. com. Larry at Larry Brill dot com. Okay. That's the best way to get a hold of me right now. Anyway, I mean, that's my main email address. Perfect. Well, that is great. Yes. Yes. I'm, I just, I'm more, I'm more enthused and ready to go make another book I know. trailer. We got to We won't mention any names, but I think Debbie Monk needs to go do, <laughs> do another, another one. Do another one. <laughs> Lara, thank you so much for joining us and for teaching us even more about book trailers. Thank you thank for you. listening to the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. um, And please check out the Writer's Block NH Facebook, the Writer's Block Podcast on your favorite podcast catcher. And if you'd like to hear this episode again or share it with a friend, you can head over to the United Podcast Network TV. That's United Podcast Network TV. 
find this episode and all previous episodes on the United Podcast Network TV. May you be inspired, feel empowered, and be well. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.